Is GPT-5 good enough for voice AI? And where does it differ from other models? If you're serious about building voice agents, you should definitely pay attention as choosing the wrong model could actually break your system. To make sure this doesn't happen, I'm gonna show you in today's video how you can test GPT-5 with your voice agents, some insights on benchmark, what makes this model different from others, including a couple of pros and cons, and lastly, my take on whether or not you should use GPT-5 already or still wait. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Janis Mohr and I run my own voice AI agency since the beginning of 2024. And since then, we have served anything from small businesses up to fortune 200 clients building amazing voice agents that help and bring actual results and since the beginning of this year we launched our own voice ai community where we educate people in the voice ai space which has now already more than 4,500 voice ai enthusiasts that learn actively alongside of us and finding their place in the voice ai space so if you're into voice ai and you want to learn more about it definitely check out the link in the description now if it comes to you trying gpt5 with your voice agent it initially depends on the platform that you've chosen as your orchestration layer that might be something like vapi retail Ultravox, LifeKit, whatever you've chosen, you can most likely use it with any of those platforms because the API that GPT-5 runs on is very, very similar to the previous models. So we talk about 4.0 and 4.1. So anything in the OpenAI stack is very, very similar. So those platform providers for the orchestration layers have a very easy way of implementing that, which also means that you will most likely see it already being released with most of the big providers. So I know for a fact that Vapi has it. I know for a fact that UMAI has it. And there are a couple of more that already have it implemented. So it is very, very easy to try. And to do that, what you do is you go, for example, to a platform like Vapi, which is a voice orchestration layer, and you can simply click here on create an account. I already have one, obviously. So being in here, what you would need to do is you need to create an assistant. And you can do that by going here in the left side menu to assistants, click here on create assistant, and you choose a predefined template, for example, and then create assistant, which then looks something like this. So you have the assistant Morgan here. That is my example. And right here in the model section, by clicking on model model, you'll see here in provider, you can select the model, right? And I've already chosen GPT-5, but when you click on it, you can see that you can choose from a whole list of different models that GPT or that OpenAI offers, and you can then choose the one that is most relevant. So it offers all three of the new models, which is five, mini and nano. I'm gonna explain all of them in detail as well. So you can literally just go in here and take maybe already an existing agent that you know works and where you have already tested things with and just try comparing it with, a, with one of the new models. Because like with any new release, the way it interacts and talks is usually a little bit different. And GPT-4.1 is, for example, more conversational. It, is, it brings you usually more responses and a higher length, while GPT-5 for my tests is usually shorter. So it also has a shorter response time, which again is just an extra benefit that we can take advantage of for voice AI because we anyways want more short messages during the phone interactions. So this is something where you can just trial and see how well it works. So I definitely recommend you doing that anyway before you do any kind of implementations so you get a feeling for how well that version works. And by simply just selecting it here, you can also see that Vapi provides a couple of benchmarks. I would always take them with a grain of salt because they might not always be 100% accurate, but they give you a great indication on where this model lays. And you can see here that GPT-5 itself is at 550 milliseconds delay when it answers. So this is basically the time the AI needs to answer or needs to wait until it gets a response. And you can see also the price, which is great. And they are very competitive. And especially the nano version is very competitive compared to the price of the previous models. But where this plays in and whether or not this is actually a good choice, I'm gonna explain you to that as well, because most of the time people think that the delay and the latency is incredibly important, which isn't always the case. So bear with me, I'm gonna show you the models and I'm gonna show you as well how they compare. So you can decide for yourself whether or not it is something that you'd like to use or go for. Now, lastly, once you've selected it here, you can simply click on publish and then talk to the assistant, which is then already using the new model. So fairly easy to test. You can use it throughout any kind of tech stack because it has the same API infrastructure that the other models have as well. So it's fairly easy to change, which means you literally just need to change the model tag and potentially a couple of extras about the max tokens, depending on which values you have set. But this is something you can very, very easily test, which is also the reason why whatever voice provider you use, you will most likely see this implemented very soon in the future. Then coming to benchmarks, my favorite thing. And one thing that I want to mention upfront is that it might be surprising to you, but I have actually not seen a significant change if it comes to success evaluation of the calls. What we often do is we basically benchmark how well a call works based on certain criteria. And what we have done is I basically used one of our low level solutions that we built for, some, for a client of ours. And we switched it to GPT-5 because we have less friction in between and we can just test things better because it is anyways a lower volume. And we haven't seen any big change to success valuation. 
which obviously is nothing super surprising because it always depends on the use case and the prompts you use. So there's a lot of variability in it. So when it comes to benchmarking models, I usually don't like to benchmark them on success valuations because that is a thing that you need to do with a lot higher volume because prompting makes a massive difference and model like different promptings. There's a lot of variability that goes into that, which makes it hard to just separate what makes a good benchmark. So to give you an actual feasible benchmark based on a comparison that OpenAI even provides, which obviously OpenAI has created the model, so they also know how well they work and they created their statistics, even though they are maybe not the most precise one, they created them for us so we can really understand it. And that's something I definitely recommend you to leverage as well. So I'm gonna post you the link to this specific page as well. It will look a little bit different from your side, but here we have a overview, a comparison of a couple of models. And I'm gonna guide you through why I have these models here, why I've selected them, and I will also go through which of those models make the biggest difference so you can choose for yourself which model you actually want to try. So obviously we have the three big flagship models, the new ones, GPT-5 and the Mini and Nano version. And then we have as well 4.1 and 4.0 because those are the other two versions that we have been actively working with so far and had great success with building actual effective solutions. Now 4.1 again acts a bit different to 4.0, that's what I want to mention. 4.0 is in our opinion better in the conversational aspect, while GPT-4.1 is also great, but it has longer responses. So you gotta control more with prompting, so it also affects the way you prompt things. But generally we have been using these two for most of our builds when it comes to actually building voice AI solutions. So this is what most of our clients are using and they're very happy with this. And both of them have small little nuances if it comes to prompting, but generally they're both good. And looking over that, you can see as well that intelligence is quite high with 4.1 compared to 4.0, which is already high as well. So these two are pretty good for reasoning. If there is, for example, a voice agent where you don't have any tool calls, you could also use the mini versions. They would be fine as well. But then you might run into issues that tools are not always called at the exact point when you want that because they just don't see that exact connection and it will result in less tool calls or sometimes even in tool calls it positions where you don't want them, but then this is usually again a prompting thing, but that might be not as relevant right now. So where does this compare to GPT-5? And I've literally gone through this a couple of times. I've also done the same in our tests that we ran and anything that I basically gathered out of it. And these numbers that are here, they're, or these values that are here, they're actually pretty accurate as well if it comes to pricing. So what I'm going to do is I basically just go over them and show you the biggest differences that are actually relevant for voice AI. So comparing the reasoning part, you can see that mostly all of them are very, very equal. The only one that differs a bit is GPT-5 Nano. So this reasoning model means that if you have, for example, no kind of two calls, you could go for GPT-5 Nano because the price is insanely cheap. Going down here, you can see as well that these prices are just insanely cheap for the Nano version. We have 40 cents for the million output tokens, which is incredibly cheap compared to the $10 that we have with the actual five version. But for us, it is not always about the price, but if you're very price sensitive, which obviously makes a big difference if you have a high volume of calls, then this might be actually something relevant for you. And comparing the other two models that we have been using, we see 4.1 with $8 and 4.0 with $10, which also compares to the five version. So from that side, there is not much of a difference. However, the mini version which is great here it's only at two dollars which is obviously something that i really really like because this makes already a massive difference and given the amount of reasoning that it's very equ equivalent that is very equal to what we see with 4.0 which is at least something where i haven't honestly seen a big difference the only thing that confuses me here a little bit is that it's called reasoning here and intelligence here so i'm not sure if OpenAI has an actual reason for that but what i have seen for the reasoning that gpt 4.0 was actually performing quite well compared to gpt 5 mini or on a very equal level so there wasn't much difference right there and a big one that i also noticed which is kind of like an indirect indicator on how the price is going to affect your actual solutions is that anything i've tried with gpt5 has usually shorter and more concise or precise responses compared to something like 4.1 the responses were generally cheaper so if i talk to it it can answer with the exact same outcome or information but in a shorter or more concise way which might be great especially if it comes to prompting so if you limit your voice agent for example to, to accept only 150 tokens you can imagine that the responses are going to be shorter so having an ai that can formulate things more efficient might be more relevant in this case because it also shaves off token usage which also means that you get more out of the million tokens that you would actually use right so you have already more efficiency from that side which might be actually passively affecting the price here then if it comes to the speed you can see obviously that the gpt5 nano version is incredibly fast 
this is also one of the reasons why it might be interesting for some of you to see that really want to optimize for latency but even again for us this is usually not an indicator what makes a good voice AR or not it doesn't make it or break it just because of the speed but for anyone who is really really efficient and would like to have speed that is even quicker than a human if you set up things properly you might want to look into this then one aspect that makes the five models different from the four or for one is that they include now reasoning tokens which hasn't been the case prior to that so that might also have a slight impact on the price but probably also on the quality now there's another aspect that might be a deal breaker for some of you at least to partially fall back to 4.1 which is the token window size or the context size you can see here that we have with the new models a token window of 400,000, which i've also seen which is already great but it's not as great as what we had prior you can see for example 4.1 has a million token window and the 4 version has 128,000. So anyone who was running on the GPT 4.1 because of the token window, you most likely want to stick there and not just switch to the new model. You definitely lose a lot of context. This is generally not something that affects anyone, but mostly people that actually have either a lot of knowledge inside of their prompt or they have insane structures in place. Now, we don't recommend obviously having a system prompt that is a million tokens in length. This would be detrimental and probably just kills the productivity and quality of the outcome because the amount of prompting you need to put into that is insane and it just doesn't make sense. So it just doesn't add up. So you want to have your prompt definitely, definitely shorter than that anyway. But where this context window becomes really interesting is when it actually comes to chat completions based on the knowledge that we feed into a voice agent. Now, as you can imagine, a knowledge base nowadays doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have a vector database and you need to store stuff somewhere else and need to fetch it because you have so much data. No, we often used an alternative by just leveraging the context window that some models provide us to feed in the documents and then just have a literal chat completion based on this context window. Now, based on this document or the information that we put in the system prompt. Now, by having a context window that is 400,000, you definitely have to shave off a couple of tokens if you have a lot of documents. This might be a deal breaker if it comes to chat completion. So basically, if you want to extend your voice AI with tools that have access to a knowledge base so you can retrieve information. In these cases, you might not want to use the chat completions, but you actually need to revert to a vector storage or you just use a different model for that specific purpose, which you can obviously combine as well. So which still means that voice AI would run on five on the, on the five model but the actual chat completions would run on 4.1. So you can combine that obviously in that case as well. But the token window makes a difference and I just want to mention that because for some use cases, this would potentially be a bit impactful. Then another big difference I've mentioned, which most likely doesn't affect many of you, but some that already have sophisticated solutions in place and actually run a high volume and just want to optimize for accuracy and efficiency. The new five model doesn't have fine tuning yet. It's not something that is available currently. You can see that here as well. So fine tuning is not a thing yet, which like I say, most people don't use anyways because they are not at the point where it makes sense for them to optimize a specific LLM towards specific outcomes. So they don't even have the training data that they can feed into to fine tune an LLM. But it is something that I want to mention because it's not part of it. So if you're running on a fine tuned version, you should definitely not move over to GPT-5 yet because it will most likely reduce the quality if you've really put a lot of effort into building a voice AI solution. Now there are two more aspects that I'd like to touch, which is down here. You can see distillation and predicted outputs. These two are most likely also not relevant for the majority of people because it's again, just more like high leverage and high level optimizations that you can do with your voice agents in case you already have a sophisticated system. And these are not available on the Nano and the Mini version of GPT-5. So in case you've been using them prior, you either need to use GPT-5 or you need to stick with 4.1 or 4.0 because it's not available with the other models. Now, for anyone else who's here and just wonders now, what on elf is actually distillation? It's basically just distilling something from a larger model to put it into a smaller model. So you basically get information out of it that is more specialized to a specific industry or outcome that you can leverage to get again a higher throughput. And the predicted outputs is just something that you can use to optimize latency because you can imagine that if someone asks all the time the same question, even via voice AI, you say, hello, how are you? In the end, it's just a chat completion that's being sent somewhere. And that string can be always the same or can be very similar. So you can send in some extra information that basically helps the AI to predict what outcome it is, which again, just speeds up the amount of time it takes for the AI to calculate the tokens. So basically create the answer. And this is again, just a way of shaving off time from the LLM responses, which might be great in case you run this on a really high end, which is most likely something that you don't want if you're just starting out. Now, given all of those details and the comparison here, what is the actual best way of implementing this? And should you already use GPT-5 for yourself yet, or should you still wait? 
Generally, I definitely recommend you trying it out and just playing around with it for yourself. But whether or not it depends for your specific use case really depends on which of those features you actually leverage and which of them are available. So I highly recommend checking out this comparison. I will also link it below in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But if you're asking me and seeing which of those models are actually the ones that I will try with even the bigger builds that we have done in the past, it will most likely going to be GPT-5 Mini because comparing it from the price as well as from the reasoning, you can see that it's very, very similar to 4.0 and not as good as GPT-4.1 based on their estimates, but it is already better than the other models that we prior tried and the speed is also better. So this might be a nice combination for us to actually see whether or not we get a generally better outcome by just using the things out of the box without any kind of fine tuning or distillation etc. So this might be something to look into and one thing that I really like is that the output is just two dollars so we can be a lot more efficient and better if it comes to prompting and just getting certain responses where we needed to optimize for pricing initially which gives us now room to breathe and to actually adjust the prompt and just increase the quality with prompt engineering on other parts where we couldn't previously because of the token limitations so that's kind of my feedback we will most likely trial gpt5 mini in the initial state because it is probably the best hybrid solution between what we currently have as a new setup and comparing it to the old one so gpt5 mini is going to be my choice for the next few weeks and once we have done a lot of more testing i will obviously keep you updated so you see what's happening as well and anyways i believe that openai is also going to make quite a lot of adjustments to it and we're most likely going to see fine tuning in the future as well for those smaller models or at least i hope so because this would make gpt5 mini obviously the most superior version for us in voice ai right now and given these details i hope that gave you a little bit of insights on whether or not gpt5 is actually something that you should look into and I hope, obviously, you're going to give it a try and see it for yourself because that is obviously better than just watching a video on YouTube. So make sure you understand it yourself. You just trial it yourself and you see whether or not you like the responses more. One more thing that I'd like to give you all along, especially for the ones that are right in the beginning and don't know so much about voice AI, keep in mind that by changing or by using certain voices, you might think that your prompt is worse or that the model is worse, while the actual issue is the voice that you've chosen or the other aspects of the orchestration layer. If you really want to test against the model itself, make sure that you test it with a unified setup. For all of your tests, the same kind of voice, you have the same provider, you have the same transcriber, you have basically anything the same except of the model because that helps you to actually benchmark and see what changes because otherwise it gets very confusing now that's my last five cents i really hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions or you have something to share i definitely like to see what you have built with voice ai as well so feel free to drop me a comment below this video and that's all i have to say for now thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one